Mercedes Benz India has been dominating the sales charts in the luxury segment with its SUVs, sedans, and now even its EVs. And to bolster its SUV and EV range and to end 2022 on a high, the company is launching these two. This is the GLB and this is its all electric counterpart, the EQB. We've got both these cars today to try out, but before we get deep into the review of these two cars, Remember to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you get notified every time new content goes up on Auto Today. ABGLS looks complete with a flat bonnet, an upright nose, wheel arch cladding and the general squared off lines should help the GLB attract customers. In terms of size, there's a 12mm deficit in terms of length and 40mm in width compared to the GLC. It is however 62mm taller than its elder sibling. While the EQB silhouette is largely the same as its ICE counterpart, Merck has heavily reworked the nose to give the EQB its own identity and bring it in line with the rest of the EQ lineup in terms of styling. A black panel with a three-pointed star replaces the conventional grille, while the headlamps are sleeker, unified with a continuous light strip running along the length of the nose, a signature EQ styling trait. The tail section too gets a full-length LED light strip and that, coupled with the number plate housing moving down to the bumper, help set it apart from the GLB. Besides these changes, there is a different set of alloys on offer as well. In terms of size, the EQB is longer than the GLB and even the GLC for that matter thanks to increased front and rear overhangs. But it isn't as wide or tall as its ICE counterpart. The differences between the GLB and EQB are far less apparent once you step inside as both cars get the same basic dashboard layout with a twin 10.25 inch screen setup but with different trims and upholstery. Rose gold finish for the aircon vents and some fancy ambient lighting on the dashboard panel on the passenger side round off the differences between the ICE and EV. I'm sitting in the second row of the Mercedes-Benz GLB and uh, before we move on to the third row, I just want to give you a sense of space in the second row. This seat is adjusted to my driving position and my height is 5'8 for reference and as you can see, I have plenty of knee room, ample leg room as well and there's enough space underneath the front seat for me to stretch my legs out. This seat in its current setting is moved all the way back. I can move it forward to make space in the last row. I can move it back and I can also recline this seat and adjust it to my liking. So, all in all a good place to be if you're going to be sitting in the rear seat or if you're going to be chauffeured around and what also helps the enhance the you know feeling of space within the cabin is this massive sunroof it stretches all the way back so you know you get a really airy cabin the GLB and even the EQB for that matter the one thing that works in their favor really well in terms of space and giving you that sense of space in the cabin are these large windows so you feel like it's a, it's a very airy cabin, it's a very nice place to be in no matter where you're sitting, at least the first and the second row. And in terms of features, uh, all you get is a USB Type-C charging port and aircon vents. This is a two-zone climate control only, so no separate temperature control for those seated in the rear seat. And uh, all three occupants get adjustable head restraints and three-point seat belts, that's also a nice touch. So getting into the third row of the GLB or the EQB is not the easiest of tasks. It's slightly uh, cumbersome, especially because this seat doesn't fold all the way down. So you have to slide it forward and then uh, somehow get yourself into the rear. And uh, once you're in and you adjusted the headrest and uh, obviously Mercedes-Benz is not claiming in any way that this seat is fit for adults or you know, uh, average size individuals. But at the same time, you know what? This seat is adjusted so that there's enough leg room and knee room for someone seated in the second row, someone of my height and frame. And with that setting, I have managed to squeeze in and um, it's not that tight a space to be very honest. 
there is still some knee room and I've got enough space underneath this seat to stretch my legs out. So for shorter journeys, for kids, as Mercedes Benz says, pre-teens, this seat is uh, not that bad at all. If you're seated in the third row, you get cup holders, you get adjustable head restraints and you get three-point seat belts for both occupants. But there are no dedicated aircon vents here. So um, in that sense, yeah, it does lose out on that one small feature, especially if you're going to view this as a seven-seater. But again, circling back to that one same point, it is not meant to be an out-and-out -out seven-seater. It gives you the option. You can fit uh, two adults, average size individuals, with ease for shorter journeys and if the need arises. Otherwise, the Mercedes-Benz GLB and the EQB work really well as five-seat vehicles. With these seats folded down, they fold flat, so you have an enormous boot space. Mercedes is offering two engine options. There's a diesel and there's a petrol. You can see the specs on the bottom of your screen right now. And the diesel version comes with either two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. We're driving the top-of-the-line diesel Formatic, which is four-wheel drive in Mercedes speak. And this engine and transmission combination is actually pretty enjoyable. And the setup of the vehicle is, you know, slightly different from what we've expected, what we've come to expect from Mercedes-Benz. Uh, their SUVs, their products in general tend to be more oriented towards comfort. This one is actually quite uh, enjoyable. Uh, we were driving down from Kodai Canal through the twisties and this was actually genuinely very enjoyable to drive. Performance is quite strong as attested by the 0 to 100 kmph time of 7.6 seconds and that coupled with a very responsive 8-speed DCT, especially in sport mode, means that the GLB does not disappoint when driven hard. While driving uphill or downhill, the gearbox behaved quite admirably without necessitating the need to take over manual control via the paddle shifter. I, like I said, it's enjoyable to drive so the suspension is slightly on the firmer side but not enough to make it uncomfortable at all actually. It does uh, a good job of dealing with bad roads, bad patches, potholes, etc. You get multiple driving modes to choose from. We're in comfort right now. You can switch to sport for excitement and uh, more aggressive throttle responses and a more responsive gearbox setup and a heavier steering. Comfort is slightly duller version of that and Eco dulls everything down to maximize fuel efficiency and this being an SUV with all-wheel drive you have off-road mode as well. Okay now I've moved into the driver's seat of the EQB which is as well know, fully electric so no engine noise obviously. Besides that, in terms of what you see, like we've already mentioned, it's more or less the same. Um, just the functions are slightly different, like the paddle shifters here, they're used for altering the intensity of regen. So if I pull up, I get minimum regen. If I pull down, I get a D. It says D on the display, which is um, slight regen. Then there's D minus, which is actually very intense and takes a while getting used to. You have to modulate your throttle responses to uh, negate or uh, you know increase the effect of regen braking because if you let go of the throttle the car just slows down quite uh, aggressively and if you long hold the left paddle shifter then it switches to something called D auto now auto here means um, this is adaptive regen what it basically does is it senses the uh, uh, space in front of the vehicle so if there's a vehicle right in front of you it will increase the intensity of region when you let go of the throttle so the car slows down more according to the speed of the vehicle in front. If there is an empty space, if there's no vehicles in front for example, if you leave the throttle the car just coasts. So that's very intelligent again, very smart feature. In the EQB 300 formatic guys, both axles get a motor each fed by a 66.5 kilowatt hour battery pack for an output of 228 bhp and a torque of 390 Nm. While max power is more than the diesel GLB, the peak torque is lowered by 10 Nm and with a 0 to 100 kmph time of 8 seconds, the EQB is also slower but only marginally. The EQB is considerably slower on paper compared to other EVs similar in price to what the EQB is likely to cost 
specifically the Volvo XC40 Recharge and the Kia EV6. When it comes to the driving, ride and handling aspect, as we all know the battery pack is spread across the floor of the vehicle. So the center of gravity is lowered. In that sense, the EQB compared to the GLB does not roll as much when you're taking a corner. But the battery pack adds a substantial amount of weight which is felt as you're going through a corner. So you always have, you know, because of the increased weight, your, the car is always trying to understeer. Overall though, with instantaneous torque delivery and taut handling, the EQB is quite entertaining to drive. Both cars offer luxurious interiors, a healthy list of convenience and safety features, along with a spacious and airy cabin, and of course, the allure of the Mercedes-Benz badge. The biggest factor working against the GLB and EQB will be pricing relative to alternatives currently available in the market, thanks to Mercedes-Benz India opting to bring these in as CBUs. The baby GLS appearance and the flexibility of maximizing cargo space or seating 7 should work in the GLB's favor. As for the EQB, a claimed WLTP range of 423 km should help it make a strong case for itself as an EV for daily use and one that can handle the occasional 250 to 300 km outstation trip as well. Plus, the fact that it's going to be the only 7 seat option in the EV space should also help attract buyers. What do you think of the Mercedes Benz EQB and GLB? Please feel free to share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up.